hope you are well. The purpose of this video is to go over a lab that's supposed to be fun, but also demonstrate an important chemical concept, that of a limiting reactant. So if you had a chemical reaction and you just threw together, say, 7 grams of one reactant and 5 grams of the other reactant, more than likely, not all of that reactant is going to actually be converted into product. One of those reactants is going to be used up first, and it limits how much product is made. Therefore, we call it a limiting reactant. So this is a lab that uses s'mores, or as we like to call them here, smoles, to demonstrate the concept of a limiting reactant. So I will post a link to this handout in the video uh, description. But basically, it sets up a very specific recipe, and that's really what a chemical re reaction is. It's just a recipe for making some sort of product. In this case, the reactants are marshmallows, graham cracker pieces, and Hershey bar pieces. And they come together to make this small molecule. So we have to be really careful in this investigation that we follow this recipe, we follow the reaction when we build out our uh, product. The suggested supplies for this actually per group of three students would be one sleeve of graham crackers, seven marshmallows, and one Hershey bar. So if you can acquire those and do this as a lab, it's kind of fun. Um, I'm going to show how you can do it virtually if you don't have access to those materials. So I've created a Google image here that we're going to use. I will also link this in the description below. You can come to this and it will not let you do anything but view it. But if you go to file and make a copy, then you can have a copy that you can then manipulate. So again, the starting amount of reactants was one Hershey bar represented here, seven marshmallows here, and then a sleeve of graham crackers. And I've found crackers, and it does vary by brand, usually has nine graham cracker pieces in it. So that's kind of funny. It probably used to have 10 and now it has nine, but I've represented that here as this kind of stack. So the idea here is you want to take these reactants, you want to put them together according to the chemical reaction and see how much product you can make. If you're using a BCA chart for this, you would want to count up everything that you're starting with on the before line. So if I'm listing that out, say, in a BCA chart, I want to list how many marshmallows I'm starting with before the reaction. And if you count them up, it's seven. For the graham cracker pieces, now the four here represents how the graham cracker pieces are going to react with one marshmallow. We want to list how many total graham cracker pieces we start with. And what we're doing for this is counting each little section as a graham cracker piece. So each sheet has four graham cracker pieces, and we've got nine sheets. So 36 altogether, nine times four, 36 graham cracker pieces is what I want to record on the before line. And then here under chocolate, uh, again, the two is not referring to how many I have. It's referring to how many will react with four graham cracker pieces and one marshmallow. So I want to actually count up my Hershey squares, if you want to call them that. And I have 12, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's what I would want to list here underneath on the before line. And of course, before the reaction happens, I have zero small molecules represented by that uh, chemical equation. So that's your starting point. Um, what you would want to do is actually then go ahead and build each small molecule. And it is set up so that you can pull a graham cracker piece away. Notice how it broke it apart into a grouping of two. Um, and then you can put your chocolate on there next because you pull two of those in in the chemical reaction. You can put your marshmallow on and then you can pull the other graham cracker and it'll go right on top. So I'll, I'll match it up. So um, you would just need to continue doing that until you run out of one of these reactants. One of them will run out and that will limit how many you can make. And what you're going to do on your change line is list how many actually got converted into the product, right? So how many marshmallows actually got used up 
and you may find that you have some left, okay? How many actual graham cracker pieces got used? How many actual of those 12 starting chocolate pieces got used? And then here on the chain, you're adding small molecules, and then you're gonna end up with some amount. So when we've done stoichiometry before this, we always used up all of our reactants. That's not always gonna be true, and this is supposed to help demonstrate that. So only one of these is actually gonna go to zero, and you'll have some leftover reactants. And then the questions on the rest of the handout guide you through some thinking about how to handle that. Thanks for watching.